Today is um, today is, uh, is celeb is, we celebrate harvest. It's a, it's a celebration of saying thank you, Lord, for the harvest. Thank you for these these great grapes and these oranges and this um, and this what else we have and these onions. Oh, onions. Mm. Oh man, that's so good. I don't know. Um, you, can't, you can't cook without any onions. It doesn't taste the same. So we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the harvest. It's also a celebration of, of saying, saying, Lord, thank you for the blessing that we have in you. you know, and, and it's easy to say, um, uh, Lord, thank you for, for everything I have. It's easy to say when, uh, when we have all these blessings. Right? It's easy to say thank you, Lord. Um, we... We all share a faith in God, right? Who made us and, and saved us. And, um, and we believe in a God that God has a plan for us. And we are so thankful for the plan that God has for us. But many times we ask ourselves, Lord, what's your, what's your will for me? You know, what's, what do you want from me? And, uh, and we ask, you know, what, what's God's will for my life, for, for us as an individual, for us as a family, for us as a church? And... Um, and when we think about God's will, we offer, often have this, this, this big, this amazing picture, really impressive, like God has something great for you, you know, working hard to do something extremely difficult, you know, and, and sometimes we have to make these this major sacrifices because that's what God wants from us. Yeah, that's why we, we think about that. Well, sometimes God's will doesn't, doesn't include something that's impressive or doesn't require uh, sacrifices, or times, or money, or energy. Um, and there is a verse in the Bible where God tells us exactly what His will is. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I want you to open your Bible in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we're going to read from verse 16. When you are there, say I. Yeah? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm going to read from New Living Translations, but feel free to read in your own translation and make notes based on what God is uh, challenging you this morning. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. And it says like this. <clears throat> Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all the circumstances, for this is God's, what? Everybody says God's will. So again, be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So what is God's will for your life? What's God's will? Be thankful in all your circumstances for what? For this is God's will for those who belong in Christ Jesus. Today I want to talk about how to have a, a grateful heart. A grateful heart in difficult situations. It's very easy to have a grateful heart in good situations, right? But today we're going to learn from God's word how to have a grateful heart in hard times, in difficult situations. So what is gratitude? Gratitude is the heart expressing itself with a gift in a special way. Having a grateful heart has, according to the Bible, has great power to break the power of the enemy. Whenever you give thanks to God, despite the most difficult circumstances, the enemy loses a big battle in your life. When you give thanks in the midst of your difficulties, you bring pleasure to God's heart. Because according to 1 Thessalonians, that's God's will. That's God's desire. And it's not always easy to give thanks, not always easy to have a grateful heart. But this is, this is the, the very thing that we must do in order to see God's will accomplished in our lives. It's easy to give thanks for salvation, right? We pray, Lord, thank you for saving me. It's easy to give thanks for blessing. It's easy to give thanks for the good things in life. It's easy to, 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 to say thank you for, for, for the house you have, for the job you have, for the family you have for the church you have, and I hope so for the pastor you have, right? Just a just few of you, yes, I got it, I got it, yeah. 
But it's not easy to have a grateful heart in the circumstances you don't like. It seems like, like God is asking too much of you, uh, of you in, in those times, especially when, when you have disappointments and, and losses and, and unbearable moments in your life. It's thinking, Lord, what are you asking me to do to, to say thank you in all this time? It's hard for us to comprehend how, how we are supposed to, to have a grateful heart during these types of difficulties and challenges in our life. So what happens when you have a grateful heart? I have two points for today, very short sermon, to the point, two points, write it down. If you take notes, write these two points down. If you don't take notes, write these two points down, right? Two points here. What happens when you have a grateful heart? Number one, a grateful heart is focused on God and not on self. Again, a grateful heart is focused on God and not on self. I want you to, when we think about hard times and difficulties, we always kind of picture Job. Yeah, Job has been through hard times and still in these hard times, kind of he was able to deal with it and, and be thankful to God. But I want you for the moment to put aside Job and I want you to think about this morning about David, King David in the Old Testament. Yeah? He, was, he was the king of Israel uh, uh, and, and he had good times and bad times. He, he had defeated armies and, and enemies and he was you know, established comfortably in, in, in the capital city and he had a nice place. He was famous, he was powerful, he, he, he had many, serving, many people serving him, you know, and he easily could have become self-focused, right? He could have caught up with enjoying the good life and not concerning for any other things in life. And not concerning about God at all, because he had everything. But he didn't. Instead, his thoughts turned towards the Lord and his purpose. More than that, David wanted to build a temple for God. And God said, no. Now, that's a real slap in the face. You want to build something for God, and, and according to the Bible, he, he had pure motives. It wasn't anything about him. It was about God's house. And God said, no. What a slap in the face. Now, imagine David thinking, Lord, I, I mean, you blessed me, you asked me to do all these things, I've done these things, I've been grateful to you, I've been doing that, and what I want is to build something for you. And you said to me, no, after all this year, I've been in your service, after all these years I've been in your church, after all this year I've been faithful to all these things, and you told me that I'm not going to be the one who builds your house. He could have easily go that way. But the Bible said he didn't. He could angrily thought, Lord, I'm angry because I devoted my life to you. You chose me. I served you. And you said to me, now, no. Instead, what, do, what does David do? He worshipped God. Look for to 2, Samuel chapter 7, to 2 Samuel chapter 7. And verse 22, it says like this. How great you are, O sovereign Lord. There is no one like you. We have never ever heard of another God like you. What other nations on earth is like you, like, like your people on Israel? Israel? What other nation, O God, have you redeemed from slavery to be your own people? You made a great name for yourself when you redeemed your people from Egypt. You performed awesome miracles and drove out the nations and gods that stood in their way. You made Israel your very own people forever, and you, O Lord, became their God. And now, O oh Lord, I am your servant. Do as you have promised concerning me and my family. Confirm it as, I, as, as a promise that will last forever. And may your name be honored forever so that everyone will say, The Lord of heaven's army is God over Israel. And may the house of your servant David continue before you forever. So David didn't come before God and say, Lord, you know, I'm angry, I'm upset. He came and he, he worshipped God. He declared who God is and, and he thanked God for the promise that he had for the people of Israel. David was overwhelmed with gratitude that for, for all that God has done in his life. He submitted to God's sovereign purpose and was willing to, to, use, to be used however God wanted him to be used. 
So even when God said no to David's dream, David was, was overwhelmed with gratitude for God's sovereign grace towards him. David's heart was focused on God and not on himself. A gratitude heart is focused on God and not on self. One of the main reasons we wrestle with, with ungratefulness is that, that most of the times we are self-focused. We don't like to hear that, but that's the reality. We tend to pursue our own fulfillment, our own comfort, and our own happiness. And, and we have in this world churches who are filled with people who, who, who are there to, to get God to solve their problems and make them happy. And when you are discontent, when you are not happy with what's happening, the focus is on you and not on God. You may say, well, pastor, that's not true. You know, I'm always focusing on God. Well, we recently had this, this vision from God, these changes. We changed the vision, the direction, the name of the church, the leadership. We started everything fresh because God told us. We're just being obedient to what God told us. And, and some of you kind of started complaining, you know, oh, you know, all these changes we made, you know, and I'm, I'm not very happy about it, you know. I mean, changing the name, I'm not very happy about it. They didn't even ask me, I'm not very happy about it, you know, and all this vision, and honestly, I kind of, you know, sending messages around, then, you know, I'm going to leave the church if that's happened. I'm not very happy with this. I don't like this, I don't like that, I don't like him, I don't like her, whatever it is. Why? Because the focus is on you, what you don't like, and not what God wants. The focus is on you and not on God. David didn't like the idea that he wasn't building God's temple, but he didn't turn into a complainer, writing things and accusing and doing things. He came, he turned to God and worshipped God. Why? Because God was his focus. Look what Jesus says in Mark chapter 8, verse 34. Then, calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must what? What? Say it loud. I want to hear it. Say it loud. You want what? Give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of good news, you will save it. Self-denial. Self-denial. The focus is on following the cross. The focus is the cross. The focus is Jesus, not yourself. God might not change your situation, but he might, he might change you in that situation. And that's why the focus has to be on God, not on self. Amen? Amen. Number two, a grateful heart develops your faith. A grateful heart will develop your faith, will strengthen your, your faith, will, will make it stronger and stronger. Look what verse 18 says here in our text that, be thankful in all the circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. When, when times are tough, when things don't, doesn't make sense, when you can't figure it out, when your prayers is un, un answers, when, when life stinks, when everything is going the way you didn't want to, to go, that's when faith comes in place. And that's when your faith will be strengthened. When you have a thankful heart, even in bad things, your faith grows and your spiritual roots go deeper and deeper. Now, the misunderstandings in this text come from, from us thinking that we are supposed to give thanks for everything when God is leading us instead of give thanks in what says there? In everything. And that's the confusion. We don't give thanks for everything. We give thanks to God in everything. We don't give thanks to God for our situation. We give thanks for God in our situation. 
The original Hebrew word here in in is used in the middle of or during this. So we give thanks to God during the hard times. We give thanks to God in the middle of the hard times. It's a concept that some of us struggle with and, and resist thinking that God is telling us to be thankful for all the difficulties. And that's what makes us harder and makes it hard to deal with it. We have to, God is leading us to, to be thankful despite the problem and not, not let the, the disappointments and the failures and the losses and the hurts, the hurts to keep us from being thankful to Him. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 says, Don't love money, be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never, what? Fail you. I will never, what? Abandon you. So no matter what comes into your life, be thankful in that situation because God says, I will never fail you, I will never abandon you. And during the turbulent times, God asks us to focus on Him, on His faithfulness to us rather than our circumstances, to tell on His promises that, that He will never forsake us, never leave us, and to trust Him that He will help us in every situation we face in life. In the Bible, the prophet Habakkuk was going through a hard times, tough times. And he said in chapter 3, he said, Even though the fig trees has, have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crops fail and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle's barns are empty. What it says, verse 18, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God of my salvation. Even I don't have all this figured out, even it's hard, in the midst of that, I will what? I will be joyful in God of my salvation. When we are going through tough times, we need to look at what, we, what, what, what is left, not what is lost. And be grateful for it. Because being thankful puts our thoughts on God rather than our problems. Proper thankfulness will help us to increase our faith in God because we're constantly being related on God and reflecting on God's promises. God can take all these things and bring, it, bring good out of them. This is what the Bible says. But the question is, are we willing to be grateful before we see the good in all this? Having a grateful heart is the key. It's the key that turns your situation around because it changes you. It changes your attitude. It changes your faith. It changes your heart. Gratitude enables us to see the hand of God guiding our lives. And our faith is increased and our confidence in God is strengthened. Being grateful has, has a way of opening, opening up your heart and, and, and your mind to the goodness of God surrounding you. It's a positive, optimistic force that, that helps us to believe that things will always work out for the best because we believe in God's promises to us. Trusting that there's a higher power out there that wishes only the blessings of His children. And he wishes that you are, strong, you are strengthened in your faith. God is telling us that if we, if we have an ungrateful heart, we'll not be able to see the eternal things that He has for us in that situation. So in conclusion, gratitude, having a gratitude heart, having a grateful heart, is, is a choice. It's a choice that we make to look for good in every situation. Having a grateful heart in all things might not change the situation, like I said, but might change you in that situation. God deserves our gratitude. And a, a, a grateful heart, it, it gets our eyes off ourselves and, 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 and focus on God. It reminds us that God is a giver of all good things. We never, that, that we were never intended to be fully self-sufficient in life. A grateful heart reminds us that God is our provider and God is our sustainer. A, a heart of, of gratitude leaves no room for complaining. 
For it is impossible to be truly thankful and also be filled with negativity at the same time. A heart of gratitude helps us recognize that we have so much to be thankful for, even all the little things in life. Laughter, food, a place to go, warm, warming, I mean, you know, being warm here even though we open the windows, all these small things in life. A heart of gratitude opens up the door for continued blessings for our lives. Having a grateful heart to God keeps our hearts in the right relationship with Him and saves us from a host and, or, or, or harmful, harmful emotions and an attitude that will rob us of the peace that God wants, to expe- wants us to experience. It helps us to become more like God and helps us develop His per- perspective and His character. Amen? Amen. So, a grateful heart is focused on God, not on self. And a a grateful heart will build up your faith. My desire for us as a church, my desire for us as you, as an individual, is to have a grateful heart in everything. Because that's God's will for your life. Yes, there might be things, great and amazing things in your life, but the most important part, God's will for your life is to have a grateful heart. We are giving thanks for all this blessing that God has for us. And all the way, it's, it's a way of saying, Lord, thank you for the harvest. Thank you for the way you bless us the whole year. But it's more than that. It's to be thankful in every situation we did in our lives. Amen? Amen. I want to invite the worship team to come up and let's have another time of worship. Two or, another two or three songs. I think Sherry has two or three songs left probably. Let's... Uh, Let's uh, have some time again. We are, we, are, we are thankful. We are thankful for, through our songs, through our worship, we, we come before the Lord and, and we sing, we worship, we praise Him through these songs, through these verses, through these words, that we are grateful. You know, we, we sang earlier, blessed be your name. You know, even, even the darkest part, we still bless your name. We thank you, Lord. That was the song we say, thank you, Lord. Here, Lord, you are here because we thank you, Lord. So let's, let's, uh, I want you to to close your eyes right now and and bow down your heads. I want you to, to have a moment to respond, to respond to God. And um, this is between you and God. And I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, You challenged me again this morning through your word to have a grateful heart. Show me the next step, Holy Spirit. What do I need to do? Holy Spirit, give me the the strength to make that step. So I want you to ask right now yourself, wherever you are, if you're watching online, take this time to ask Holy Spirit and to respond to this message. And for those who maybe don't know Christ, for those who doesn't have any relationship with Christ at this point, who don't know anything about the cross, who don't know anything about God's salvation, I want you to say, Lord, thank you. Even though I don't know you, even though I never went to church, I never had the Bible open, you can say it. If you watch it online, you can say, Lord, thank you that there is a cross. There was a cross. There was a day when Christ died for me. And I want to say thank you for that. Thank you there is a way for eternity. And I want that. Thank you for that salvation. Thank you for that opportunity. That you can have it. It will come a day you might not have it. And now is the time you can say, Lord, thank you. Thank you there is a way for me. To, to have my tickets to heaven. And that's through the cross. Lord, we thank you again for reminding us how important it is to have a grateful heart because that's your will for us. To have a heart that is filled 
with thankfulness towards you. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Amen.